The indigenous Sami people of the northern Norway, Sweden, and Finland, as well as the Kola Peninsula in Russia, are the only speakers of the Sami language, which is often referred to as Sami or Sami language. This language is a member of the Uralic language family and is spoken only by these people. The Sami language, which has a significant cultural impact as well as long and magnificent history, is in danger of dying out. The Sami languages are the indigenous languages used by the Sami people in the regions where they live. This results in the minority population speaking Sami languages. The following are the languages spoken by the majority of the population in each country. For Norway, it's Norwegian, Vokamel, and Nynorsk. In Sweden, it's Swedish. In Finland, it's Finnish. And in Russia, it's Russian. The northern parts of Norway, Sweden, and Finland, and the Kola Peninsula in Russia are the only places in the world where people speak Sami as their native language. The following is a rundown of each nation's demographics. In Norway, approximately 20,000 people are thought of to make the Sami population. The distribution is found in countries of Finnmark, Troms, Nordenland, as well as sections of Trigenblad. There are three distinct varieties of Sami languages, Northern Sami, Southern Sami, and Louis Sami that is found in Norway. In Sweden, there is around 50,000 people that are thought of to make the Sami population. The distribution is found primarily in the northern areas, more specifically in the countries of Norrbotten, Vastenborten, and Jamtland. There are three varieties of the Sami language spoken in Sweden. This is Northern Sami, Southern Sami, and Umi Sami. In Finland, there is around 9,000 people that are thought of to make the Sami population, and the distribution is only found in the most Arctic areas of the Finnish Lapland. The Sami languages spoken are Northern Sami, Inari Sami, and Skold Sami. In Russia, more specifically the Kola Peninsula, the Samis are estimated to be a number of somewhat 2,000 people. In terms of its geographic distribution, it's mostly found in the Umarask Oblast, more specifically in the Kola Peninsula. The Sami languages that are spoken in Russia are Skold Sami, Ter Sami, and Kildin Sami. It is essential to keep in mind that the statistics for the Sami population that have been presented are only estimates and the real numbers may differ. There are several indigenous subgroups that make up the Sami people, each of which has its unique set of culture and linguistic traits. The demographics are as reflected of the distribution and existence of the Sami people in their different nations, which are our places of culture and historical significance for the Sami language. The Sami language is in risk of dying out due to a combination of historical and social reasons, including the following. So the first reason being that in the past, national governments employed policies of assimilation with the intention of eradicating indigenous cultures and languages. These policies included the use of compulsory boarding schools in which Sami youngsters were discorded from speaking their own language and instead of pushed to acquire the language of the majority of the population. For instance, if they were taught in Norway, instead of learning Sami, they would be taught in Norwegian. A second aspect is that migration and urbanization have both contributed to a decline in the usage of Sami language. The younger generations in particular have been the most affected by the migration from rural regions to cities. The transfer of the indigenous language from one generation to the next is sometimes hampered as a result of urbanization, which frequently results in increased exposure to the majority languages. Another, the last point, is that stigmatization and discrimination has a major effect on the people. Historically, the Sami people have been subjected to stigmatization and discrimination, both of which have contributed to a loss of confidence in their own culture and language. This has, as a consequence, had an effect on the way in which the Sami language is passed down with families and communities. Loss of cultural history, traditional knowledge, and distinctive perspectives on the world can result when a language dies out because of its in inextricable link that exists between language and culture. 
As the Sangmai language becomes less widely used, there is a greater possibility that the culture's ancient customs, legends, and spiritual ties may be lost. Language is an essential component of both individual and collective identities, and it also plays an important role in one's overall well-being. People who strongly connect with their Samai origin may experience a decline in their sense of self-worth and overall well-being as a result of the extinction of the Samai language. It is also possible for this to result in a person's feeling culturally disconnected and estrogated from their own group. The standardization of language in society can have a number of adverse effects, including the following. The first one being loss of linguistic variety. The preservation of a cultural environment that is rich and varied requires that linguistic diversity be preserved at all costs. When a language becomes extinct, a major portion of the linguistic legacy of humanity is wiped out. The second reason being that the loss of traditional knowledge is lost. So the indigenous languages frequently included spe specialized vocabulary re relevant to local ecosystems, traditional customs, and cultural values. However, this vocabulary is in danger of being lost. If these languages become extinct, then the significant environmental knowledge and information on how to live in a sustainable manner may be lost as well. And the last one is that language plays a part in the power relations that exist throughout society. The homogenized of language can further isolate minority groups by restricting their access to education, possibilities for work, and the involvement in political processes. There are counter-movements and initiatives to re- vibe the Samai language in each different country with the goal of preserving the Samai language. So education and documentation of the Samai language is very important. Various communities and organizations are now striving to document the Samai language by compiling recordings, dictionaries, and de grammatically definitions of the language. Schools, colleges, and community centers all around the country are participating in language revival efforts by teaching the Sámi language as part of the language revitalization initiatives. The language revitalization projects include things like cultural festivals, language camps, immersion programs, and digital resources. The overachieving goal of these activities is to raise awareness of the Samai language and encourage its usage. These activities instill pride and drive into those who speak Samai, encouraging them to recover the language and pass it on to the future generations. Legal recognition and protection is another section of reviving and preserving the Samai language. Various governments across the world have implemented policies to, legalize, to legally recognize and safeguard the rights of the Samai people, including their ability to speak their own language. It has been made possible to revive and make use of the Samai language in official settings and in public services, thanks to leg legislative initiatives that have been put into effort. Thank you for listening to this presentation about the sound my language dying out. I hope you thought it was interesting and you learned something new and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!